What's up? What's up? This is Anthony. Karibuni sana. Karibuni sana. This is Anthony, and welcome to another episode of Saturday Live. Uh, I am representing uh, El Sheba, who normally you would see a uh, better face than what you're seeing today. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I hope I'm going to do a good job at um, representing El Sheba uh, for this Saturday Live. Welcome to Saturday Live, where we get to educate, inform, and entertain you uh, in all matters uh, concerning running your business online. Karibu Nisana to this Saturday Live, and today we are going to be discussing uh, how to create uh, a website for your business. And so um, before I begin the live stream, before I begin talking about the topic that we have today, um, if you're already here uh, on Facebook, on, uh, on uh, YouTube, please raise your hand. Um, let's, uh, let's, see who's, let's see who's here already. So um, if you can be able to just raise your hand. Uh, and just acknowledge it. Hey, Tuko, Tumefika. Uh, it would be nice to have. So, Karibuni sana. I see, I see Masi is already here. Um, I see George commenting, I have no hands. Uh, that is quite unlike, unlikely. I have seen your two hands. <laughs> uh, El Sheba, I see you. Um, Karibuni sana. Kezia, I see you. Uh, Karibu sana. Karibuni sana to this uh, episode of Saturday Live. Um, I trust that you are, you've had a good week uh, and that uh, your week is going uh, pretty well for you. So, um, yay, George, I saw your hands. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> uh, karibu sana. So, um, today we are going to be talking about, um, Elisheba, I see you on Facebook. Uh, yes. Masi naono nasema umefika. All right. So let's begin today's uh, live stream. And today I'm going to be discussing creating a website for your business. Um, now, the thing about uh, this whole topic is that it is close to my heart. I am the web designer here at Deep Africa, and I create uh, all the websites for Deep Africa and, and for our clients. And so uh, I have a bit of uh, understanding on uh, what it takes to build a good website for a business. I have, uh, in the last two years, built close to 200 websites, um, roughly around that number. Uh, and I, most of them have been for businesses. A number for, have been for NGOs, some for government institutions, but uh, many have been for businesses. And so when we are discussing this topic today, it's going to be a topic that is close to, uh, close to my heart. And I believe that it's going to be a topic that is going to be helpful to you. So um, before I have my talking points, um, just let me know if um, there are any questions that you have. You can post them on either Facebook or uh, on or on YouTube. I see uh, Mr. Emmanuel um, Karibu Sana. Uh, I see that you're here. Karibu Sana uh, to uh, today's Saturday Live. So um, if you have any questions, before I begin on uh, the few talking points that I have for us today, uh, is if you have any questions, just post them on uh, on the comment sections. Uh, and I'm going to uh, answer them as we go along. So the first uh, thing I'd want to talk about in terms of websites is that your website, as it was said in, in the preview for this uh, Saturday Live, is a salesperson for your business. If you have uh, a good website, it's going to help you sell. It's going to help you do a good job of selling, uh, selling your products, uh, selling your services. It's going to be a, a good salesperson for you. So. Um, if you do not have a website, the, actually, many people would wonder, is a website useful for if, if I have this small business? I would say, no matter what kind of business you're running, you need to have an online presence. Even if it's going to be a small online presence, even if it's not something very large, you need to have an online presence that is able to speak for you. Um, Lucy, I see you've arrived. Karibu sana. Uh, I see you're following. Thank you. Um, and so, uh, as I was saying, you need to have a strong online presence. Uh, for your business, and even if it's not strong, you need to at least be present. If somebody Googles your business, probably you can do that right now. You can open a new tab on your, on your browser if you're using a computer and just Google the name of your business. What will people find? Now, it is, it is really critical that if somebody is looking for what you sell, that you're, you're going to be easily found. So uh, let me first start with a story. The other day, we were looking for a laptop, uh, a laptop for, to use here at work. 
Uh, and I did not go to Nairobi and walk uh, to, to places that sell laptops. I actually went online and started looking for laptops. And, um, and what I googled was like best laptops, the best laptop for a graphic designer in Kenya. Um, and once I found what are good laptops for graphic designers, uh, I then looked for that specific model and then with the word in Kenya at the end. Now, the people who were found, who I clicked on their results, the, the results of, are the people who are more likely to get bought from because I have seen them, I have acknowledged they, they exist, I know their name. So if I'm going to actually buy a laptop, it's most likely going to be from those providers. And so if probably you sell laptops, you may probably have missed a sale from us because you are not online. So my question would be, what are you waiting for? If you have a business, um, create a website because it will help you get found. The other thing is that you will help um, now think about, let's think about the last time you bought something and probably that thing was probably expensive. You probably spent some time researching. Now imagine if um, someone out there came and gave you some really useful information, came and like walked you through step by step on what you need to do uh, to be able to get that thing you're looking for. That they were not probably trying to sell you anything per se, but they were, they, they were guiding you. So let's say, let's say you are looking for... Uh, a washing machine and so somebody online gives you details on here are the things you need to look for when looking for a washing machine here are the things you need to avoid if that person gives you that kind of information it's most most likely that you're going to buy from that person who was helpful to you than somebody who you don't know out there so um the other thing that a website does other than helping people find your business if they are looking for the kind of product that you have is that they will uh, they will be provided with information before they are ready to buy now, think about that same scenario when you're looking for something expensive. It probably would, it's, it's, it's most likely that you did a bit of digging uh, about that particular company that you're interested in buying from before you actually bought the thing from them. So um, let's say you are buying the uh, same, probably a washing machine you would go to a supermarket. Let's think about a service. Let's say like accountancy services uh, or a lawyer. Uh, if you're going to hire the services of a lawyer, it's most likely that you're going to first look at what cases have they done before. Before you actually engage them directly, you'll want to see what have they put on their website, what kinds of cases have they dealt with. Uh, if it's a, an accountancy firm, which who are their clients? Who Can I trust these people? And so uh, our website serves many purposes. And even if you don't have a large budget, you need to have an online presence because you are you are losing a lot by not having it. So I'll talk about what a great website is. Now that you have thought about, let's create a website for my business, what does a great website have? Uh, the first thing that you need to have in, with a great website is that it needs to be easy to navigate. Easy to navigate, uh, meaning that when someone arrives on the site, they are not uh, feeling confused. They are not feeling um, that I can't be able to find the information I'm looking for. Um, the website needs to have very clear navigation, very clear, a clear way of being able to find the information you're looking for. And so uh, it, have, organizing that is critical. Now, the web designer will play a big part of organizing that content in a way that is understandable. But before the web designer touches your website, you need to have thought through what kind of, um, what do you want? What do you, what, how would you organize it? Because you are the expert in your industry. What is the first question someone asks when they are engaging with a business of your type? Um, just as I continue, I've just seen a number of people have come in. Francis Mbogua, Karibu Sana, I see you. Uh, Richie Liu, Karibu, 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 I see you. Um, you're welcome to the stream. Um, I see Kageni, Kageni is, uh, is here. Um, yay, uh, thank, you for, thank you for streaming today. Yeah, so um, the first thing that your website needs to have, as I've said, point number one is that it needs to be easy to navigate. Number two is that it needs to have clear information. That when I come to the website, I need to, like within the first three seconds of me loading that website, I need to be able to figure out, are you, do you have what I'm looking for? So like there's a space, um, let me illustrate what I mean. Uh, there's a space, when somebody loads a website, there's the first thing they see is what is called above the fold. Let me illustrate what I'm talking about. I'm going to move to one of uh, a different screen here, just a moment, as I set that up. Um, so 
Let's look at this website, for instance. This is uh, our new website. You are the first guys to see this website. Karibu sana. Uh, to what our website is going to be looking like. We're going to be launching this pretty soon, uh, but I want to pass a point using this, that you need to be able to tell, like, immediately, what does this business do? So, for instance, what I've chosen to put here uh, above the fold, so above the fold is what you see in front of you before you scroll down. Before, like, go coming to the scroll bar and going down, you need to be able to like see, have very clear information about what your business does. And so for instance, you know, like within five seconds, you can tell that this is something about web design. And you'll probably read more about it, but if somebody was coming to your website and they're not able to see the thing that they were looking for within three seconds, it's most likely that they're going to bounce out. And so this is, is a, a, a good way of illustrating is that be clear on the first above the fold on what the website uh, is about. Now, the other thing about uh, having a good website is that you need to have, um, you need to create trust with the client. Um, now, one, there, there are small ways of creating trust with the client. When they come to your website, they need to feel that they are safe, that they are in the right place, that they are not, um, they are not being led to, you know, like for instance, if you went into, into um, a, a hotel and that hotel was dark, and that place was like, let's say it had bad lighting um, and you are feeling a bit uncomfortable um, that it was dirty. Before anybody speaks to you, you'd feel a bit uncomfortable about hanging out in that place. And so it's the same for websites. If a website is cluttered, if it's disorganized, if it's using a million different fonts and having like information not organized in a good way, if it's not like having a clean design, it's most likely that people are not going to trust what is being sold there. You may have the best products ever, but the thing is that person does not even know that you have good products or not. They have come to your website for the first time, so they have no idea whether you actually have good products or you don't. So my encouragement would be that as, when you're creating a website, now this is going to be dependent a lot on, uh, on the web designer and the, uh, the quality of the web designer, but it needs to be clean um, and creating trust in, in, the, in the client who visits uh, that website. The fourth thing that a website needs to have is that it needs to be surprisingly helpful. Um, somebody needs to be able to like come to that website and get more than they, they thought that they would get, that they would be able to receive more information that they, than they hoped to get. So for instance, providing a free download for something or providing, and you see free downloads, for instance, if you're selling computers, you can like sell, like provide a free download of checklists to, 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 um, to guide you on buying your, your laptop. And you provide like really useful information. And you see when somebody comes to that place, they're going to be surprised, oh, by the way, this is really useful. Thank you for providing this. Uh, and most likely they're going to remember you. So, um, and not just that, provide small things that delight an individual so that by the time they are leaving your site, even if they're not going to buy from you, because actually a majority of people who visit your website for the first time are not going to commit to buying from you, but at least they'll have something from you that will make them feel, Nyewe, by the way, this guy, he's already giving, I owe him something because he's already giving something to me. So uh, it needs to be surprisingly helpful. And I believe the last thing on my list is that it needs to be simple and uncluttered. I think I've mentioned it in creating trust. And when you create a simple and uncluttered design, it makes people uh, relax. It makes people feel... Now think about it. When you went to the supermarket the last time, um, I'll not name names here, but I'm sure you've gone to the small no-name supermarket I have no no offense to anyone even who owns like a very small supermarket, but most of the smaller supermarkets will try to cram a lot of things inside the supermarket and create very narrow narrow spaces, and so you you feel you feel claustrophobic when when you're in there. Now, have you gone to some of these um, supermarkets that are in malls, um, and you'll find that they have wide aisles. It's not that they don't, that space they are not paying for it or they are being given free space, but by creating free and empty spaces, somebody feels relaxed when they're in the supermarket and they're able to buy more. So in the same way, when you're on a website, that website needs to be free of clutter. Um, that it, it, it's not, it doesn't make someone feel claustrophobic and that helps them to relax and actually read through the things that you're, you've placed on that website. Okay, so now we've talked about what a great website should have. Let's talk about um, what, are, uh, what are the steps that you need to, to take when creating a website. 
Um, I, I'm, I am listing this step, clearly organized content, content that will um, be equal, of clear organized content. Um, for instance, uh, let's say you have a list of, um, you, you, you sell, um, let's take an example of what, uh, that you sell legal services. You need to be able to clearly think about what is the first thing that you want a client to see when they come to your website. What is the most critical thing that you are you you would like your client to 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 view? Um, one of the things that you would uh, you'd be careful about is that, for instance, you want to give them your history. Uh, what what kind of history do you have? What kind of um, um, what kind of um, like let's say which clients have you served? What kinds of uh, cases have you handled in the past? So think about, uh, organize your content in a way that when somebody actually comes to your website, they are going to find useful information provided. They are going to find um, things, useful, usefully answered information. And that comes from organizing your own content. Make sure that you have, well, one of the things that I normally advise, probably let me take you step by step. The first step is, um, what pages do you want on your site? Uh, you want a home page. Ordinarily, most websites have home pages, about pages, uh, product pages that if, either if they're selling one product, then, then it's one product page. And then they will then go to do more product pages, um, like deep, deeper into the products, and then having a contact page. Now think about all the pages that you need to have on your website um, before starting to, um, to, to um, like sending any of the information to the to the client. The third, the second thing you need to have is think about if all in all of those pages, what do you want each page to say? What do you want each page to what? In, what kind of information do you want on each and every page? Now, the other thing that you want to organize for is things like pictures. Now, let me speak about pictures for a moment here. Pictures form the basis of your website. Your website will either be made or broken by your pictures. If you have good, high-quality pictures, then your website is going to be it's going to look beautiful. If you don't have very good pictures, if you just took photos, run pictures before starting to, um, before like sending your content, so so that your, your your images are going to be of high quality. Other things you may want to gather in part of the have clients been able to gain um, by using your services. Uh, either written or video, like gather them together, it's going to make the work of building the website much easier. So the rest, after you've built, organized your content, it's also useful to just go through a number of websites that you like, or websites by your competitors that are going, that, um, well, like having, seeing what your competition is doing and what kinds of websites your competition is having will help you like figure out what kind of website do I need to build um, uh, what what is the industry doing within my uh, within my industry? What kinds of websites do they have? And so, um, um, looking at sites that you like, like and taking links of those sites, or probably taking snapshots, uh, so we are able to guide the designer to get you the kind of website that you want. Think about it. Have you ever gone to um, a salon for the ladies? Well, guys these days go for salon to salons sometimes. <laughs> Kinyozi. Uh, but have you ever gone to a Kinyozi and you didn't have any idea of the kind, the kind of haircut you wanted? And then you just told them, where Jibambe to uh, cut my hair the way you want? You most likely are going to be dissatisfied because what they will do is not what you would have wanted. So the other day I went to the Kinyozi, to the barber, and they cut my hair slightly too, too small. Um, and I, the, the problem was not them. The problem was me. I didn't tell the Kinyozi, please make sure that my hair is not too short, that it's, it's, you ubakisha kidogo up there. And so the same, it's the same thing when you're, when you're dealing with a web designer. If you are going to, if you're not, you're, you're not going to be having a proper idea of what you're looking for, and you don't guide the designer to know what exactly you're looking for, then they are going to create something, and you're not, probably not going to be the most satisfied with it because it's not exactly what you would have wanted. And so, uh, gather, like looking around and seeing what other people are doing, and being able to tell the designer, I like what this person has done because of one, two, three. I don't like how this person has done it because of one, two, three. It will help the designer um, create a much better website for you. 
Now, the rest of the steps are going to be much, uh, it's going to be much easier when you have good organized content. And I'm going to breeze through the steps because so that I don't keep you here for too long. Uh, before I go to those steps, let me just look through the... Um, Hey, Marcy, I see that you like the website. Thank you. <laughs> uh, nice, 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 nice. It's nice that you like our website. Yeah, I can't look forward to launching it as well. Um, okay, so as I said, if you have any questions, we are going to have a short Q&A at the end of this. So uh, as I finish up, make sure that you just post any of your questions uh, up there so that I can be able to review them for you. So um, step two in getting a great design for your uh, web design for your business is choose a good web designer. Look for a good web designer and choose the best web designer for your business. Now, this is fairly simple <laughs> because let me plug in here that we design websites. So like you can, you can check out our services and I think we do a pretty good job here. Um, and so, but let, just in case, well, just in case you do not choose our web design services, and that's still okay because again, um, well, I would rather that you choose us, but it's still possible that you might not uh, choose us. Um, there are a, a few things that you need to ask your designer for. Now, the reason I've brought this back is, um, again, as I've said, we design websites, and this is the kind of design you expect to have. Uh, and we've designed a couple of other websites as well. And so um, just check them out. Um, you can go to deepafrica.biz. Um, forward slash web design in Kenya, or just go to deepafrica.biz. That's the link before you're able, uh, it's the link of the, of the website. We've not launched it yet on the .com, uh, but you can check it out. Um, so um, one of the things that you need to, well, you need to ask your designer um, when you're interviewing them, a couple of questions. Whether that person is your friend or um, your neighbor that you trust a lot, you need to be able to ask them a few questions to make sure that you do not uh, get a bad design in the end. And interviewing a de your designer is going to be really critical to getting a good design. So the first question you need to ask them is that, do you have any samples? And the samples need to be somewhat, they may not be in your industry, but they need to be close to what you already are doing. Um, like, let's say they've done websites for the service industry. And so if you're a lawyer and you find someone who has done a website for an accountant, then they probably already understand what kind of websites they, what, what kind of website you, they should build for you because they have a bit of experience there. Um, well, the things you need to look for is, do you like the design? Would you buy that design if you are the business owner of that website for the samples that they're going to give? Now, the other thing that you need to check out for is, uh, what is their process? What kind of process do they have? Do they have a good process of uh, doing web design? Do they uh, engage? Do they, um, like, how, what is their process? How do they collect content? How do they build? Do they build from templates or do they build from scratch? Do they, uh, do they use, like, layout, um, uh, layout software, um, like UX software, like InDesign, uh, not really InDesign, sorry, uh, like Sketch or InVision Studio or Adobe XD, or do they design straight to, uh, to the website? Do they, ask a few questions, try and figure out what their design process is, because um, a good website is built uh, from a good process. If they have good processes, then it's most likely you're going to get a good website. Then uh, things like what are their prices? Now, on, in terms of prices, be careful not to go too cheap because it's very possible for you to get, well, cheap designs are available everywhere, but good designers are not available everywhere. And most good designers do not charge very low for their websites. So it's very critical that you make sure that the people who you're going to engage to design the website for you are going to be, uh, they are not too expensive, they are at least within your budget, but even if it's slightly off your budget, um, that they do a good job. First check on, on the kind of work they do, before looking at the price, because the price is going to be, now think about it, this website is going to serve you for like, uh, let's say three, four, five years. Uh, and so when you think about the lifespan of that business website and the kind of value it's going to bring back to your business, it actually pays to pay, pay a bit of money uh, for your design. And again, how much it will cost will depend on um, a couple of factors. You can check out our blog, we've indicated how much our website averagely costs in depending on the features. Um, just Google it. Actually, you'll find it on Google search results. How much does a website cost in Kenya? How much does it cost to build a website in Kenya? You'll find our, our results somewhere in there. Um, 
and you'll see how much it costs. So um, that's you get what you pay. You what you get what you pay for. If you pay for little, you don't get like excellent value. If you pay um, a good amount of money, you get excellent value as well. Now, uh, a good designer, a good web designer has a good web portfolio. It ha he has he has his own website, and it's a good website. It's well built. And a good designer will also advise you on uh, things to avoid and things to do. Um, and so uh, I would advise you to take your, your time in looking for a designer, but um, make sure that they, they are in, their style and yours are somewhere aligned and that they can be able to advise you. Because if somebody can advise you, then they're already experienced enough to know what is required. Okay, so uh, that's the second step in building a website. The rest are going to be quite fast because they are quite simple. Um, you need to choose uh, web design, web web hosting for your uh, for your website. Now, web hosting is a container where your website is going to be stored. Now, uh, we Deep Africa does web hosting, so it will be an easy choice for you if you if you are designing with us, because most of the times we will bundle the web hosting cost inside your uh, for the first year inside your web design uh, charges. And so, but the things you need to look for in a good web web hosting company is that they need to be reliable. Uh, they need to, uh, it's good if they are local because it means that you'll be able to give them a call and deal with them directly. Um, we offer 24-7 support, for instance, and you can call us and we usually won't take you through like uh, a robot telling you to dial one, two, three. You, you, we are actually available if you call. You can even call now, 0712-500-500 and you'll, you'll hear somebody answering the call immediately. So it helps when they are local because it means they actually understand the dimensions, how to run, they understand the, the, the challenges of running your business in Kenya. Uh, and then they also have great customer care. A good web hosting company should have good customer care uh, that allows you to uh, answer any questions because you are going to run into challenges once in a while and you want them to be able to deal with you in a very clear way and solve your problems uh, in a chap chap way. Um, if you haven't chosen a domain name for your business, it will need to be a domain name that is the same as your business name. Uh, sometimes that name may be taken, so you can try the .co.ke equivalent if you're trying .com. Um, if you're, you're previously trying .com and you aren't finding it. Um, or you can try like a, a small variation. Now, if you call us, we'll just guide you on here's a good variation if that one is not available. So you can call us to, uh, for that as well. Step four in getting a good website design for your business is let the website do their let the website designer do their thing. Now, um, once you've given them the content uh, and it was well uh, well organized, like what we said in step one, then it's going to be easy for you to then provide um, the the designer is going to have an easier time. And so, give them time to create your website for you, and it's going to be you're going to get a great design after that. Please don't pass, um, like keep on calling. Uh, on Mefika Wapi, because many designers don't like that. I'll say, like, internally as a designer, I don't like that a lot. So it makes me uh, work under pressure. So give the designer time. Great designers keep their deadline. If they tell you that the website will be ready in two weeks, it will be ready in two weeks, and it, you, most likely if they did their job well of asking you the things you're looking for, you're going to love what they're going to do for you. Most of the times they're going to give you a link for you to be able to view, like what I've shown you, like thepafka.biz, um, for you to be able to view how, uh, how your web web website looks. And so once you get that link, share it with your friends, share it with your family, share it with your clients, and see whether they, what they think about what you've built, uh, what, what the website that has been built. Most of the times it's possible that the, the web designer and you didn't realize that there was some information missing. And so sharing that link with your friends and your, some of your um, close business uh, customers will help you figure out uh, catch a few errors here and there, catch a few spelling mistakes and so on. And so after that, launch the website. Now, um, I want to end it here because that basically is the end of building our website. But I would want to mention this, that our website is like a flyer. You can get a great flyer designed, but as long as that flyer is going to sit in your house or sit in your business without being given to other clients, uh, it's not going to help you. So once you build your website, it's important that you advertise it. Uh, there are many ways of doing digital marketing, and many ways, many of these ways are pretty affordable for most businesses. Uh, and so consider Google, Google AdWords, consider Facebook marketing, consider um, things like Instagram, 
because they will help you actually market your business, market that website, and help it bring, because when customers then come into that website, if it was well designed, it's not going to have any, it's not going to, it's going to help convert those clients quickly. And so um, be, uh, just make sure that as, you, as you're doing what you're doing, um, um, uh, make sure that you, you, you advertise, make sure that you, your, your, um, your website is well advertised for it to actually be able to give you the value that you're looking for. All right, so this is the end. The final part that you probably want to have um, in getting a website for your business is that you need to make sure that that website is up to date. There are many times when a website is built and forgotten for many years because they do not check whether um, keeping the content up to date. That's the final part, just making sure that it's up to date. But that has been how to get a website for your business. I don't know whether you have any of you guys have any questions. I am looking through, um, I'm looking through the the, the comments. Um, Marcy, you mentioned that you like the website. I can't wait to see it live. Uh, I can't wait to see it live too. Um, let's see on Instagram. No, not on Instagram. On uh, on Facebook. Okay, so El Shaba asks. Uh, Like what, what are the prices for a website? Now, um, a website, the, the cost of a website will depend on a number of things. Uh, the main thing is going to be functionality. Uh, what kind of functionality that, does that website have? If it's just a simple informational website where somebody comes and looks through and sees the products you have and probably then like clicks to call, that website can be um, as, as low as what our base package is. Um, and let me show you what our base package is, just to plug that in again. So our base package is uh, 46,400. Now, um, that, that's where you, you, expect the, you expect a website to cost roughly around that for it to be built well, for it to be built beautifully. Uh, now, it can get uh, more expensive from there, but um, most sites will, be, will range around that price because um, a, a designer will have like thought through, like really thought through uh, the whole entire design. And so um, the, what will make our website slightly more expensive would be if it has special functionality or if it has a lot of content, like let's say uh, 20, 30, 40 pages, uh, then you will, um, you, the website will cost slightly more, uh, but generally expect to spend somewhere in, in the regions of between, um, for an average website, between, between 30 to 40,000. Uh, shillings uh, when you're when you're having your website okay um, the other question that I'm seeing is how can I increase traffic for the website now as I've mentioned at the end of um, at the end of what I was talking about a few minutes ago that your website is like a flyer if you do not uh, spend time to uh, build the website uh, to, to promote the website then it's going to yes it can be found on, on Google just easily uh, if you give it time but at the same time, you need to promote it by like advertising on either Facebook or, or on Google or on YouTube or on Instagram. Um, so one, those are some of the paid ways of increasing traffic for your business, for your website. Some other ways of increasing traffic is blogging. If you write, uh, like for instance, you are the expert in your industry. So like one of our clients has um, a fitness, uh, is a fitness school. Um, let me just say their name right now. It's Zoezi School. Now, Zoezi School, they, they train um, fitness coaches, uh, fitness trainers. I'm sure I'm muttering that name. Uh, probably you can comment down there what exactly they're called. But they're fitness, um, I think it's trainers, uh, personal trainers like that. And so you can create a, a blog um, about information that personal trainers will need to have, like um, how to get clients as a personal trainer, how to... Um, uh, how well topics that would interest uh, personal trainers how to keep fit um, here are routines that will help spice up your next uh, routine, your next training class um, uh, ways of probably like accounting for your personal training business things like those and if you blog and you write those uh, that information on your website Google will find it and when somebody comes and finds that so for instance let me give an example even of ourselves uh, let me just open a new tab on the browser. Uh, just a moment. 
So for instance, if let's say like what we asked, how much does our website cost in Kenya? So if you Google this question, you'll find like we've answered it down here, how much does the website cost in Kenya? Let me just open that up. So you will find that the most, most likely um, scenario would be that if you answer questions like clearly and succinctly, you will find that it's easier for someone to find you. It's easier for someone to, uh, to they, they will trust you more because you've provided useful information for them. You've given them information that is useful for their own, um, useful for them without charging them. And so, like for instance, uh, how much does this cost to create a website in Kenya? Uh, and we have given the answer here. Now, notice in answering this question here, we have um, like given um, like placed links to our own website. So if somebody is interested in seeing the kind of work we do, uh, you can check out the hosting packages here. You're able to, um, someone will navigate from this page to, to our page as well. And so uh, that's one way of increasing your website traffic. I, Al Sheba, I hope I've answered your question there. Thank you for asking that. Um, so are there any, any other questions? If we don't have any other questions, I think we can close it at this point. Raymond, I see you. Thank you for following. Uh, we appreciate that you came and watched Saturday Live. So if there are any questions, anyone who has any questions for me, I'd love to answer them. Uh, I, see, I see George is asking uh, that how do I make sure that my website is never hacked? Now, uh, that's a very good question, George. Uh, you, one of the ways of making sure that your website is never hacked is keeping the things that need to be private, private. So for instance, um, being careful not to share your passwords um, with anyone, especially passwords to your, uh, to, your, to your WordPress account. Now, that's some of the easy things. I'm sure you're not sharing passwords. But one of the other things you need to be careful of is like, you, um, you, 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 let's say if you're running a WordPress website, that you have, you don't make it very easy for a, a hacker to be able to find, um, to find the logins or the login links. So for instance, you can use a plugin um, like uh, WordFence. WordFence helps to um, like limit, if somebody is trying to like guess the password to your back end, uh, they will guess once, twice, thrice, and the fourth time they get locked out. So uh, plugins like those help you to prevent anyone from hacking uh, the website, uh, prevent anyone from like getting in maliciously. Um, it's, it's really crucial that you use strong passwords, especially for your website. Uh, if you're having a website, um, especially if it's on WordPress, have a very complex password and um, to prevent anybody from being able to guess it and br brute force attack. Um, what a brute force attack is, if somebody is trying to like get into um, the website, they try over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And so at some point they're going to guess the right password and that's what we call a brute force attack. Um, the other way brute force attacks work is that they overload, um, they make so many requests that it actually then, like the way you'd bang a door uh, until it actually breaks because it's getting too many requests. So one of the ways you prevent things like those is by using plugins that blacklist uh, a particular uh, dom uh, IP when somebody is trying to get in um, without succeeding. So if they guess the password once, twice, thrice, then they get locked out, uh, locked out of your website. Thank you for asking that question, George. Um, all right, so uh, I see. All right, thank you so much. I really appreciate you spending time with me. It's been about 40 minutes. Thank you for giving 40 minutes of your time. Thank you so much. We, we, I really appreciate it. So we do this every Saturday, Saturday live at 12 noon. We come to you to give you information that will be both useful, educative, and entertaining. And so uh, I encourage you to uh, come and let's have, let's engage, let's have uh, this conversation again. If you still have any questions, we'll make sure to answer them so you can post them on the comment section. If you're watching this and you didn't catch the Saturday Live, we have it available out there. Just uh, comment, comment there and we're going to uh, answer any of the questions that you have. 
but we are really grateful that you spent time with us, uh, spent time in uh, engaging with us here in, uh, in, uh, on Saturday Live. And so until next time, catch you later, uh, be creative, get that website for your business. If you do not have a website, talk to us. We'll be more than happy to uh, engage with you and give you the kind of website that you're looking for. Um, and karibu sana. So until next time, catch you later. Thank you for watching. All right. Bye.